Hey, listeners. We had some pretty extreme technical difficulties during the recording of this match, which ended up corrupting some of the recording and causing us to lose the first half of the episode. Fortunately, we still had our lower quality backup recording, which I've cleaned up as much as I could. I had to cut some pretty large chunks out of part of the episode, particularly a few segments from the rebuttals, and you'll probably notice a few audio imperfections here and there, but the episode is still very listenable, and thankfully it more or less returns to normal quality once we get into the second round of rebuttals. We apologize for the lower than usual quality of this episode, but we hope you still enjoy it. Thanks. Hello, and welcome to Smash Fiction, the podcast where we pit two or more characters against one another in a battle of strength or wits, or brooding at a postdoctoral level, and see who would win. This week, Mewtwo versus Darth Vader. Feel a disturbance in the forest. That's not. That was just me fucking trying to lower my voice, but this is the only <laughs> option I have, goes. guys. This is what happens when you try to sound mean, Bob. All right, no, I could do it. I feel a disturbance in the force. Astro kerfuffle. The ever-expanding space fracas has reached critical mass, and the force has taken notice. Although it's been affecting light and dark side alike, this is the first time that it's been enough to interest a particular Sith Lord. Darth Vader feels a mind emerge from the static of the ongoing ruckus. It's clear, ambitious, and feels decidedly vengeful. A powerful psychic force in the galaxy could either become a useful ally, or must be squashed immediately before it can present a threat. Vader orders his subordinates to plot a course for this interesting being. Space echoes with psychic waves as the faraway power declares, The reign of Mewtwo will soon begin. We shall see, Mewtwo. We shall see, Vader replies to himself. Mewtwo feels the distant amusement rippling through his mind. Vader, is it? Perhaps he'll have to start his purge of humanity there. Mewtwo senses Vader's arrival and ascends to the ship, unlocks a door with his mind, blowing several stormtroopers out, enters and seals the door behind him. He strides past the humans on his way to the bridge, easily sweeping them out of the way with his tail and telekinetic powers. Vader stands waiting for him and psychically slams and locks the door behind Mewtwo. Vader cocks his head. You are not chosen. You are not even trained. Fate didn't destine you for anything. You were made. No better than a machine. Mewtwo draws himself up. A machine, you say? And what are you but a man made by the happenstance of reproduction like any other of your kind, human? If that is fate, then it is gross. <laughs> the air crackles with energy and words that cannot be taken back. Elsewhere, the Doctor and Edie look at one another as the TARDIS gives a particularly foreboding clank. The crew of the Serenity pauses mid-shenanigans. Lilu frowns in irritation at all this conflict. On the surface of Arrakis, Starbuck grimaces. Something is definitely going down. Morden Solus hmms thoughtfully to himself. Spock raises a single eyebrow. Rogue Squadron and Star Fox silence their guns for a moment, suddenly feeling like guppies in the shadow of a shark. Kirk and Shepard stop making out for a second. Notice the shift in the galactic atmosphere. Assume it's because of their raw, overwhelming sexual prowess and go back to making out. <laughs> and somewhere, above the surface of the Earth, Godzilla and the Power Rangers have a moment of awe at just whatever is about to go down. All of space holds its breath, and not just because it's space and there's no air. So who will win this long-awaited battle? I don't know. Lilu and I were too busy eating a whole bunch of chicken for me to figure it out. So I, Megan Bob, will be your impartial judge this week. Representing Team Mewtwo are Kit Mulcairn. So if Herman Cain quotes any part of this episode, is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing? (laughs) Do we have to stop the show? And Claire Mulcairin. I dreamed of creating the world's strongest opening argument, and then I succeeded. (laughs) (laughs) Representing Team Darth Vader are Dan Mulcairin and guest advocate Neil Butler. 
prepare for bullshit. But please don't rush it. To debate pop culture within our nation. To stop Kit and Claire getting above their station. I'll hashtag Danlist about Darth Vader. And I'm gonna trash talk Mewtwo later. Dan. Neil. Team Vader wields sabers at the speed of light. Join the dark side now or prepare to fight. Sheev. That's right. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sad that you guys aren't wearing the costumes and aren't standing back to back. You <laughs> didn't wear the costume? <laughs> Wait, who's who? <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, you both did Jesse. You should have coordinated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As a note of clarification, we won't be using Mewtwo's Mega Evolutions because the anime and original games conflict too much. So both teams agreed that Mewtwo and Vader were a good match without evolutions coming into play. In order to choose who went first this week, I asked both teams to make a wish on a falling star. It was nice. We sat under the night sky together and talked about our dreams, our hopes. We watched for stars and marveled at how beautiful it all is. To be clear, this did not help me choose who went first, but it was really nice. Team Mewtwo, M comes before V in the alphabet, so you'll be going first. (laughs) Fair. Team Mewtwo, the world will heed your warning. Or at least we will anyway. So I, I just want to say I wished for Mew, but uh, that falling star must not have been a legit star, so. Darth Sidious had complimented Vader's force abilities as unparalleled. Mewtwo has been repeatedly called the strongest Pokemon, and his in-game stats reflect this. But what does that really mean outside of their respective universes? In episode 19 of a podcast called Smash Fiction, hmm. maybe you've heard of it, host Dan Mulcairn states that Vader's connection to the Force runs down to his DNA, that Anakin began to have visions when he was three years old and performed his first mind trick at age nine. That's cute. Mewtwo is the product of mad science taking the origin of all poke life, Mew, an adorable but immensely powerful psychic type and one of the strongest, most versatile Pokemon to have ever walked the earth or floated adorably above it, and genetically Mm. modifying a clone that would be even stronger. Because science. (laughs) Mewtwo was breaking out of labs and murdering people off screen before his first birthday. Within seconds of waking up from his medically induced clone coma and breaking out of his containment tube, a security measure that was designed to stop him activated and 36 robotic arms descended from the ceiling to grab onto him. Without moving and without making a sound, Mewtwo made them all instantly disintegrate. He then completely destroyed the massive island laboratory complex with one angry thought. In a following montage, we see Mewtwo getting to practice his powers by lifting a horde of Taurus, which are uh, bull Pokemon, if you're not into Pokemon, into the air, and then defeating four fully evolved Pokemon, including a Pokemon resistant to psychic attacks, all without visibly exerting himself. But maybe the most bullshit thing he accomplishes with TK? Mewtwo uses his telekinesis to rapidly change the weather from a sunny day to a lethal storm. He moved the ocean. (laughs) Not as good as moving the moon. Okay, now for the telepathy. Mewtwo can completely mind control people as well as alter the memories of dozens of people at once. Obviously, I'm expecting Vader to put up a bit of a mental willpower fight, but since Vader isn't known for his occlumency, I'm going to say that, at best, having to fend off Mewtwo's mental as well as physical assault is going to throw Vader for a bit of a loop. Without getting too Poketechnical for the non-Pokemon fans out there, Mewtwo's got a few moves that are going to be absolutely annoying for Vader to have to deal with, especially an ability called Disable, which disables the last ability an opponent used against it in the games. All of Vader's favorite moves can be taken away one by one. In the first Pokemon movie, this ability is stretched to even crazier levels when Mewtwo uses Disable to take away all the special moves of the 48 Pokemon there, just like in one fell swoop, so that they're forced to slowly beat each other to death. Because melodrama. (laughs) As for Mewtwo's endurance, we see its progenitor Mew, the only Pokemon that can stand up to him, telekinetically slam Mewtwo into stone hard enough to leave a crater. This action only seems to piss Mewtwo off and not actually cause any significant damage. Perhaps this is because Mewtwo has a move called Recover, which causes it to regain 50% of its HP in an instant. Also the biggest reason why you should save your damn Master Ball. If you analyze what Mewtwo accomplishes in the film, you'd realize he's actually superhumanly intelligent as well. After realizing that humans are shitty, as we all Mm. must eventually, and deciding (laughs) that the Pokemon that obey them are fools for doing so, Mewtwo plans on creating its own clone version of Noah's Ark and the Biblical Flood. He doesn't get that far because the power of friendship is a bitch to go up against. 
But Mewtwo does build a castle and cloning laboratory and accomplishes what teams of scientists struggle to do basically on his own. And it's like the most advanced 3D printing style clothing too, because it can make a fully functioning adult Pokemon within minutes of acquiring their DNA. Listen, Vader can do some crazy shit with the Force. That I'm not going to argue against. But why is he also so limited? If he can lift literal tons with his mind, why can he only use the Force to slightly increase his jumping distance instead of flying like Mewtwo can? If Vader has some telepathy, why can't he also completely alter dozens of people's memories at once, like Mewtwo can? Mewtwo is not only more telekinetically and telepathically powerful, he's also a lot more telekinetically and telepathically versatile, and that gives him a big edge in this match. If Darth Vader is a hammer, Mewtwo is a Swiss army hammer that includes a surgical blade, chainsaw, and a self refilling bottle of 5-hour energy. <laughs> <laughs> not sponsoring this show, unfortunately. Get at me, 5-hour energy! There's enough Star Wars fiction in existence that a sufficient amount of cherry-picking his best moments can create the illusion that Darth Vader has a power level which is starting to approach Mewtwo's weight class, but if instead of focusing on that one time that Darth Vader rolled a natural 20, and you instead looked at his more average outings, you'd get a sense of what sorts of maneuvers he'll be able to regularly and reliably deploy for an extended fight against Mewtwo. We all know the super impressive moments from the comic books where Darth Vader was able to stop the leg of an at or whatever, but the thing about those moments is that they're rare. You can count them on one hand. The reaction you have when you see this happen is, wow, I've seen a lot of Star Wars movies and read a lot of Star Wars books, and I didn't think Vader could do that. These isolated moments of op are not how Vader typically fights. Most of the time, like in his episode 4 duel with Obi-Wan, or his various duels with Luke, or even the very impressive hallway fight scene in Rogue One, he just walks up to people and swings a lightsaber at them. Occasionally, he'll add in a force choke or a force throw. But unlike his opponent today, he does not fly. He does not casually fling his enemies over the horizon. He does not tear holes through metal walls. Why is this? Because there is a difference between what someone can do once and what someone is comfortable doing for an extended period of time. I I don't have much upper body strength. If I had to pick up and move a 50 pound filing cabinet, I wouldn't be able to carry it for very long. Now, similarly to how certain Sith Lords might get trapped under certain AT-AT legs, if I got trapped under a 50 pound filing cabinet, I could pretty easily lift it off myself. However, if I had to fight someone for an extended period of time, my weapon of choice would certainly not be that aforementioned <laughs> filing cabinet. And if Darth Vader wants to defeat Mewtwo, it's not going to be enough to move one really heavy thing one time. Mewtwo has so many ways to stop Vader's attacks. He can dodge by flying out of the way. He can create nigh-impenetrable barriers. He can redirect range attacks back at their source. Also, Mewtwo takes half damage from any psychic attacks that do manage to hit him, and he's got a whole bunch of HP. This fight is not going to be about who can do one impressive thing one time. This is going to be a battle of endurance. If you want a really clear demonstration of which of these characters has the bigger MP bar, picture how they walk. That's right, Darth Vader walks! Mewtwo always hovers. Something which Darth Vader is incapable of doing is apparently no big deal for Mewtwo to such an extent that he's never not doing it. And as a side note, we all know that Darth Vader doesn't have the best track record against opponents who have the high ground. Darth Vader definitely can and definitely will lose this fight. It wouldn't be all that unusual for him. He loses a whole bunch of fights. There was obviously the time that Obi-Wan Kenobi chopped him in half on Mustafar, but in his later rematch against Obi-Wan Kenobi, Darth Vader only killed Obi-Wan Kenobi because Obi-Wan let Darth Vader Vader win. At the end of A New Hope, do you know who defeats Vader? It's not even another Jedi, it's Han freaking Solo, who manages to sneak up behind Vader's ship in the Millennium Falcon and blast his ass spinning off into space. So much for being force sensitive, apparently he didn't see that one coming. Even in the one fight that Vader does manage to definitively win in the films, his fight against Luke on Bespin, there's a ton of back and forth. It's a very close fight and Luke even manages to get in a few glancing hits on Vader. And this is when Luke is a brand new baby Jedi Knight in training. This is his first time fighting as another person wielding a lightsaber, and despite all of Vader's alleged chosen one, Mary Sue-ness, it ended up being a very close fight. And do you remember how all throughout Return of the Jedi, Luke is always talking about how he isn't willing to kill his father, and Yoda and Obi-Wan tell him that he has to kill him? You know what they're never talking about? Maybe Luke won't be able to defeat him. Maybe Vader's too powerful. That's apparently never a concern, and their assessment ends up proving valid when Luke and Vader have their final fight. Once Luke works up the courage to fight him, he ends up defeating him. Handily. Ah, I see what you did there. 
Remember what turns Vader to the light side at the end is that Luke defeats him, but spares him. I don't know if there's anyone in the history of Star Wars who has been spared by superior opponents as often as Vader. No amount of cherry picking, however, can make Mewtwo look bad. He simply never loses a fight over the course of the Pokemon movie. No one even manages to score a good hit against him, and he one-shots pretty much every foe who opposes him. The only one who even comes close to challenging him is Mew. Cherry picking his strongest moments just isn't necessary either when you talk about Mewtwo, because in every moment of his waking life, Mewtwo is constantly unleashing enormous displays of psychic power that put Darth Vader's most impressive moments to shame, and these actions come to him as easily as breathing. Oh, sorry. I guess that analogy doesn't work in this case, because breathing is yet another thing that puts a strain on one of our competitors. <sighs> Whoa. Pocalicious arguments? Thank you, Team Mewtwo. Alright, Team Darth Vader, give in to your hate and anger and also your opening arguments. One of these combatants was crafted when some scientists threw some darts at a selection of various genetic traits, saw the results, shrugged, and then turned their nightmarish abomination out into the big bad world. And really, it's no wonder that this Frankenstein's monster, this Frankmon, if we are using mm -hmm. the Pokemon portmanteau formula, ended up being the most terrifying monster of his world. I mean, when your competition includes self-aware clumps of cotton candy, cocooned insects which are physically incapable of attacking, and whatever hellishly racist caricature Jinx is supposed to be, oh, the bar God. is pretty low. Now, let's look at contestant number two, who started life as an immaculately conceived Mary Sue, who trained for decades to hone his psychic and combat skills to a vibro edge, then killed everyone else in the galaxy who had been similarly trained. Well, you can understand that Vader has cleared a much higher bar when it comes to being the single most terrifying individual in Star Wars. Now, as mentioned previously, I covered a lot of what makes Vader so impressive 93 episodes ago, mm, back in oh, Smash Fiction God. episode 19. I won't rehash these points too much, but just to touch on it, the movies show him strangling people from thousands of miles away, deflecting blaster bolts with his bare hands, throwing objects telekinetically, and attacking with superhuman strength and toughness, while the comics show him telekinetically destroying a giant AT-AT walker and taking out a Y-Wing starfighter with a thrown lightsaber. But... That was years ago, and we've gotten even more juicy Darth Vader content since then, which only further underscores exactly why Vader is walking away with his second Smash Fiction win today. We all remember the scene at the end of Rogue One, where Vader proved that he was basically Jason Voorhees with a laser sword, but his subsequent appearances in other media have been even more impressive. In the Rebels episode, The Siege of Lothal, Vader simultaneously lifts two Imperial walkers with no visible effort. In the novel Lords of the Sith, Vader gets attacked by a swarm of lilacs, gigantic insects with hides so strong that they repel heavy blaster fire. It takes one TK shove from Vader to blow these otherwise impervious enemies apart. In one issue of the Darth Vader comic, Vader decides to leave an underground facility by ordering an orbital strike on it. He protects himself from the destruction using the Force, then just walks out of the building. There's an entire comic storyline called Vader Down, in which the Rebellion learns that Vader has been marooned on an alien world, and they send the entire damn Rebel army and fleet after him. Vader is on foot and alone, and no one comes close to getting a win on him. There's a scene where hundreds of heavily armed Rebel troops, some of whom are piloting ground assault vehicles, come at Vader from all sides. You're surrounded, one of them cries. As he ignites his lightsaber, Vader replies, All I am surrounded by is fear and dead men. Remember that Anakin's Jedi training would have involved learning how to deflect incoming ranged attacks and resisting mental domination and manipulation, meaning that Mewtwo's two most reliable attacks will be much less effective than he's used to. Despite his vaunted intelligence, Mewtwo is all about brute strength. He doesn't attack with any sort of finesse or even really a visible strategy besides crush target with telekinesis, repeat until target is fully crushed. Vader is shown using sneak attacks in Empire Strikes Back. He can tell when an enemy is about to attack him, even when he can't see his enemy, as is shown in the Star Wars comic when Chewbacca attempts to snipe him from a mile away, and Vader instinctively parries away the blaster bolt with his lightsaber, despite not even knowing that Chewbacca was there. His TK is fine enough to dismantle a droid, and then use that droid's parts to repair his own cybernetics. And he's used his telekinesis to target specific internal organs to the point of being able to cause heart failure. And most of all, Vader has the reflexes of the galaxy's greatest fighter pilot. Remember, as a child, 
he was the only human in the galaxy who was able to compete in pod racing. And he freaking won the Boonta Eve Classic in Phantom Menace against dozens of other seasoned pod racers after one of them sabotaged Anakin's vehicle. Looking at these two, you would think that Vader was the brick, strong and tough, but slow in plotting. The truth is, while he is stronger and tougher than Mewtwo, he's also faster, smarter, better trained, more experienced, and much more in touch with his environment and his foe. The ability to defeat canonical idiot Ash Ketchum is insignificant next to the power of the Force. Mewtwo is possibly the most powerful psychic-type Pokémon in existence, though it's admittedly hard to tell, as most of Mewtwo's battles either end with a Pokéball or with Mewtwo's fighting spirit being doused by the power of friendship. Which is great for an anime or manga, but not so great when it comes to a battle with a six and a half feet of black-clad destructive power. When we first meet Mewtwo, in the first Pokemon movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, he is escaping the lab where he was created and filled with conflicting emotions about how he was created. His existential rage drives him to create an army of clones, with whom he plans to capture and clone all Pokemon while also destroying the rest of the world with a huge storm. This plan is derailed when Ash jumps in between Mew and Mewtwo to stop their fight and is revived by the power of friendship. Mewtwo learns a very important lesson and decides to hide himself and his clone buddies away from the rest of the world. And that's where Mewtwo is mostly found, in most of the games and in the anime and manga. When not under Giovanni's control, Mewtwo is hiding in a difficult to access cave or remote mountain range. His fighting style is described similarly. Mewtwo doesn't move around too much and instead stands motionless to conserve energy, focusing his thoughts on his psychic type attacks, which will provide an easy target for Vader to hit with his lightsaber or with anything not nailed down, like rocks, trees, starships. As Dan mentioned, Mentioned, Mewtwo's attacks are all about brute strength. As an enhanced clone of the legendary Pokemon Mew, Mewtwo is powerful enough to deal with most Pokemon easily, but when fighting on an equal footing, such as against Mew in the first movie or Genesect in the 16th, Mewtwo doesn't do as well. The special, Mewtwo Prologue to Awakening, shows that Mewtwo is affected by unfavorable type matchups as well. He is forced to flee by a Tyranitar and two Escavaliers, which are Dark Rock and Bug Steel types respectively. Being Dark Lord of the Sith, as well as being mechanically enhanced, like Genesect, would certainly put Vader on at least an even footing with Mewtwo. And considering Vader is fighting using years of training, rather than simply lashing out instinctively, there is no doubt that Vader holds a strong advantage. Anything Mewtwo can throw at him, Vader can throw back harder. But Vader doesn't necessarily need to defeat Mewtwo in combat. Mewtwo has a lot of turmoil in his soul. He knows he doesn't fit in with the rest of the world. But, perhaps Vader could offer an alternative. Perhaps Mewtwo could join Vader. By his side, they could rule the galaxy. Vader has plenty of experience working with clones. Perhaps using the Empire's technology they could create a friend. A <gasps> Mew 3? There are few better at temptation and manipulating strong emotions than a Sith. And even if Mewtwo isn't swayed, Vader's words will disrupt Mewtwo's focus. I sense a presence. A presence I have not felt since. Episode 19. It's another smash fiction victory for Darth Vader. <laughs> I feel like you're pandering with this talk of friendship, but I'll, I'll accept it. <laughs> Now for rebuttals, the time where accusations are hurled, like so much telekinetically thrown debris. Team Mewtwo, advocates aren't meant to fight, not like <laughs> this. That was, first of all, just the dumbest line. I was like, it was the Have worst. Have you forgotten the premise of Pokemon? Pokemon? <laughs> I know, I had a lot of, I was like, wait, do you fundamentally not understand your own world? I'm so confused. <laughs> I think that the stuff you're saying about type is so clearly nonsense. It's just complete nonsense. Wearing black clothing does not mean you're a dark type. Vader does not have the ability to control shadows. That's what dark means. It means the energy of darkness, the absence of light, that kind of thing. He, if, any, if he's any types, he's a psychic type and he's a fighting type. And those are the two types that Mewtwo's resistant against. He's clearly a steel type, which is resistant to psychic. Steal my fucking ass, but he's gonna be using psychic type. Look, I did say in my opener that Mewtwo fucking one shots a psychic type. Yeah, Pokemon Alakazam, anyway. which is one of the strongest psychic Pokemon. So he took out an animal, which was also everything he was mind controlling in that movie. I mean, were animals or idiots? We're, he mind controlled all animals. Joy, you monster. All animals. Yeah. Pokemon are obscenely powerful. They're they're way more powerful than normal humans. They're like superheroes. There are Pokemon that can like hurl mountains. There are Pokemon that can travel faster than the speed of sound. And like Mewtwo is definitively over and over again stated by not just people, but also the narrator as the strongest Pokemon, like not even close. Like he just, he just one shots everybody and Pokemon are really powerful. 
the narrator in the first Pokemon movie does not definitively state that Mewtwo is the most powerful Pokemon. He said that he is about the most powerful Pokemon, but doesn't say it's about Mewtwo. It could, he could mean Mew. Okay, but they also say that Mewtwo is stronger than Mew many times throughout the movie. No, no, he we're He could doing... mean Friendbon, the Pokemon who embodies the, the power of friendship. The greatest power is friendship, I will give you that. But this is not a three-way battle between Mewtwo, Darth Vader, and friendship. If it was, both of us would lose to friendship because we're all villains here who have been defeated by the power of friendship. So let's not hurl any stones there. I mean, oh, I'll hurl some stones, madam. I mean, Mewtwo wasn't really defeated by friendship. He was just convinced to stop because a child ran into the fucking blast. <laughs> because he realized all it took to the undo his powers were tears. Darth Vader doesn't have working tear ducts and you know it. <laughs> He can pull the tears out of another person's body and throw them at Mewtwo. Oh, no! I don't like where this is going. Okay, so you want it to be like, oh, Mewtwo in the games is stated to just stay still. Like, yes, we see that in the anime when gnats are trying to attack him, that he basically does stay still. But when a worthy opponent like Mew actually shows up, He'd be flying all over the place trying to uh, trying to deal with that little my my beloved yeah I mean Pokemon ever. Vader has taken on starships on foot so like it doesn't matter if you can fly really fast he can still grab you and crush your he, organs oh but he's not gonna this is that these examples that you're bringing up are not just like how Vader normally fights it's like he can maybe try something big like that one time but like if if he could do that he would just be like f he would be flying why doesn't he fly I I just don't think that he has that in him it's one thing to say that Vader can or cannot do really dramatic things. First of all, he can, and he only needs to crush Mewtwo's heart with the Force once. What I will say is, it is too bad that, like, Vader is way better in melee combat than Mewtwo is. Vader can shrug off anything that Mewtwo throws at him, and as soon as he gets within arm's reach or within thrown lightsaber's reach, there's nothing Mewtwo can do against that. Mewtwo deflects a hyper beam from a Gyarados. That's like a giant energy blast. And you're, you keep talking like... Vader's gonna crush Mewtwo like Mewtwo cannot telekinetically push that force back and do the same thing to him. I think the stronger psychic and who would win a fight if they try to crush each other is the one who is powerful enough of a psychic to be always flying. <laughs> Look, it is one thing to be able to project lowercase f force remotely. It is another thing to control the uppercase f force force, which is the field that is generated by all living beings, which allows you to see the future, allows you to know what people are thinking and feeling, all of which are things which Mewtwo has demonstrated no capability. Mewtwo has an ability do. called Future Sight. You have to interpret this through like the Game Boy game mechanics, but and he has he has a move called Amnesia, which like, you know, he has he has moves that like indicate that he has psychic abilities and we see him demonstrating psychic abilities on par or greater than Vader's like in the anime, like the whole wiping the memories of people, that kind of thing. Team Darth Vader. I don't like sand either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to share that because I want us to think about the things that we have in common. So there you go. I would like to just very quickly get into some of the abilities that you guys were highlighting about Mewtwo. First of all, he defeated a bunch of robo arms at the beginning of the movie. And like later on, we see again, canonical idiot Ash Ketchum defeat Almost the same number of robo arms without telekinesis. Canonically superhumanly strong, Ca Ash Ketchum. Do we need to get into this now? <laughs> Have you seen the Facebook post about him lifting the log? He is absurdly <laughs> strong, and he was saving Pikachu's life. He had the the mama bear strength, the like adrenaline strength, and he and it was like eight robot arms. It was thirty six for Mewtwo. So secondly, Mewtwo definitely did not make those clone machines that you were giving him credit for. Oh yeah? Uh, yeah. Made them. I forget who it is. It's either it's either Ashen Buddies or Team Rocket. They go down there and they find these computer logs from the scientists that made Mewtwo talking about making Mewtwo. So clearly, like, those were machines that he brought from the original lab. Okay, uh, you know, I will give you that because maybe it was underground. He didn't destroy that when he literally destroyed everything else on that island. And then he made a fucking castle with a stadium in it. I mean, it. that's very impressive. I'm sure his architectural <laughs> skills will come in handy. It looked like a Studio Ghibli castle. The, it it definitely impressive. did. The third thing I want to say is you guys were talking about how Mewtwo can control the weather. And like, yes. yeah, in the movie, it seems like it takes a very long time for him to affect any sort of meaningful change. Like he's sitting in that chair, whirling his hand around for several minutes minutes of screen time and like the implication at least to me was that it takes like probably a few hours if no. not days for him to whip no. that thing up I, e either I way i think it's ambiguous any, but go on yeah no it's not anyway anyway you slice it 
if he has to stand still and whirl his hand around to do something meaningful, Vader's gonna be on him. First of all, Brock even comments that uh, that that storm came on really fast. I mean, for storms, a storm can develop over the course of 30 minutes and be very fast. Can Vader affect global weather patterns is the question. This is not- No, he this can is, cut someone in half while they're standing there waving their hand in a circle. We're not bringing that up as an example of a thing that he is going to weaponize against Vader. We're bringing it up to show that Mewtwo has a ridiculous upper limit to his power and that there are all sorts of things that he could do that are very impressive that are outside of what Vader could do if he, if he set his mind to it. Yeah, but he only makes a storm once. It's not something they could do, like, multiple times in a fight, is it really? Okay, we're not really going to use the storm in a fight. Jesus. Amaterasu, help me. <laughs> These people. The thing is, you guys keep ignoring the barrier and the counterattacks. Like, you keep saying Vader's going to chop him in half and just completely ignoring the fact that we're being like, Ah, uh, no, he is not. I mean, the reason Vader doesn't do this, these o- overpowered, flashy maneuvers all the time is because he doesn't need to. He very rarely gets into a situation where he needs to lift up an ATAT. Uh, maybe if there was like a, a light Corellian freighter on his tail that was shooting at him, maybe he could have used the force to sense it or use some powers <laughs> to avoid getting shot by it and spun off into space or use the force. Okay, to, yeah. so, so what you're saying is Mewtwo is actually a secret Skywalker who's going to distract Vader during his trench run because he's sensing this connection with him. Because like, that's why... Han Solo got the shot on Vader was because Vader was distracted because he sensed this connection with Luke. Mewtwo doesn't have any sort of emotional connection to Vader. He's just a weird space alien cat that Vader's going to cut in half or crush his heart. We already established that Mewtwo can mentally fuck with people hardcore. So that's something that Vader's going to have to deal with. Stop acting like you could just chop Mewtwo up. Like that barrier don't exist. (laughs) Between the two of us, one of us has had training in resisting mental fuck with the two. And it's not Mewtwo. Mewtwo actually does get training from Giovanni. Yeah, canonical psychic Giovanni. I do actually have canonical evidence that Mewtwo can resist bullshit. Please. In In the second movie, Giovanni does some bullshit where he's trying to capture Mewtwo. And the only way he can get Mewtwo in the first place is by basically taking all of Mewtwo's little baby clones uh, hostage. And so Mewtwo like kind of gives himself up and Giovanni puts him in a thing where he's like trying to break him down psychically and Mewtwo's resisting and Giovanni can tell that Mewtwo will literally die before he gives in. I mean, you're talking about psychological warfare. You're not talking about direct psychic assault. That's like a machine that, that does it. That Alakazam you guys brought up earlier didn't get an attack before Mewtwo knocked him out. We haven't seen Mewtwo actually repel psychic attacks attacks when you were talking about like giovanni trying to break down mewtwo psychically uh he's team rocket who are hardly the height of competence giovanni's impressive it was not jesse and james doing it giovanni is like <laughs> a, a real a real da i mean at some point you got to blame the guy at the top for the decisions that his mm-hmm. underlings are making <laughs> you know what you know, i'm gonna bring this rebuttal to a close by saying i really like meowth that's right <laughs> he's pretty great <laughs> Meowth is a great character. We can all agree on that. If you love Meowth, there is an episode of Pokemon I need to show you. Oh, no. Is it the one where he learns to talk? It's very sad. It's the one where he learns to talk. It's very sad, (laughs) though. It is very sad. Wait, oh, is Dan trying to protect me? Bob doesn't like sad things. Possibly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, but then you like learn his little backstory and he's so okay. great. He's well, just like a more fleshed out character and I appreciate that. What does Meowth have any you know what we're gonna get into a Meowth tangent? Nope, we're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> Save it for the time Meowth whenever cast. we do that. In the wreckage of the ship, both Vader and Mewtwo stand panting. A head pops up and peers over one of the doors, it's been twisted off its hinges. Hello? Hello? I've got a message for Mewtwo and for Vader. Is that either of you? If it's not, can you let me know where to find them? And who are you? I'm Joshua Sibley, courier of messages across the stars. <laughs> Almost the entire rest of space has a message for you, and I was tasked with coming here to your... He looks around for a second. Lovely ship? And delivering it. Mewtwo flicks a paw and the door flies off the hinges and clangs against the far wall. Joshua Sibley looks around in awe at the devastation and hands it out to both of them. The message reads, Sometimes you need a villain to take on a villain. Thanos is seeking the Infinity Stones, and while the universe could deal with this astro kerfuffle, we're not prepared for Thanos. Choose a team of fellow villains and come up with a plan to keep Thanos from getting the stones. 
You can keep an infinity stone for your good work. We're pretty sure that won't backfire in any way that could be <laughs> plot significant later on. Joshua Sibley coughs. Vader digs out a credit chit and hands it over. Don't spend it all in one place. Joshua Sibley sighs at the weird dad advice, thanks them both, <laughs> and leaves on his sweet space motorcycle. <laughs> so, advocates, villains assemble! You can choose any villains not from the Marvel Universe for obvious reasons. You're limited to four team members, so choose wisely. Tell me how you and your band of 'er ne'er-do-wells plan to keep Thanos away from the Infinity Stones, and tell me which stone you'll keep and what hijinks you plan to get up to using this stone. Since Team Mewtwo went first in the initial round, Team Vader gets to go first in the lightning round. So Team Vader, take it away. Boy, do we have a team of villainous villains for you, Bob. (laughs) Ah, I'm excited! First off, What's the best way of stopping Thanos from getting the Infinity Stones if we get them first? So we're going to send Carmen Sandiego and Savitar to go find them. Uh, So Carmen Sandiego, as you know, she can find like anything anywhere. Uh, She's a master thief. Savitar is the god of speed. He's basically evil Flash, but he also used to be a fighter pilot. So he'll be able to fly Carmen Sandiego anywhere she needs to go to find an Infinity Stone. Also, I mean, she could probably just steal the stones right out of the Infinity Gauntlet on Thanos' hand. So on the other side of things, we have an expert magic user, one Keldor of Eternia, a.k.a. Skeletor. Ah! (laughs) Thank you, Neil. He's going to be using his sorceress might against Thanos. And then also, with the sneakier aspect, uh, we have the villainous Inky, who is, of course, one of the ghosts from (laughs) Pac-Man. Because... There were a lot of people that were attacking Thanos in uh, Infinity War, but no ghosts, and I suspect that that's his weak point. <laughs> <laughs> I Psychics like are weak against ghost types. They oh, sure oh are. Oh my god. So I think uh, Skeletor is going to be distracting him with magic. Inky's going to be scaring him very badly. <laughs> Carmen Sandiego may actually end up stealing the gauntlet off of his hand, but if she doesn't, Vader will just cut off his hand, as is his want. And uh, either way, we're getting that gauntlet. Well, I figure, I mean, I don't know how many of you watch the Flash TV show, but um, the standard operating procedure in that, which Savitar is probably going to follow, is just run around the threat really, really quickly until it stops being a threat. And, I mean, it sounds dumb, but it works. Boy, is it dumb. (laughs) Skeletor and Thanos can compare skin hues and and discuss what products they use to get their skin so lovely and blue. (laughs) And uh, I believe we are going to take... The Time Stone. He's going to turn back the sands of time. Mm. Try and rescue like Padme. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious what he would do. The man has made some mistakes, some miscalibrations, and uh, I'm sure that he would like to take some of those back, as would Skeletor, who began his career by getting a face full of acid and losing the flesh on his skull. Uh, so probably go back, make sure he can restore his good looks. It actually turns out that uh, Inky has a lot of experience going after Infinity Stones because that's actually what Pac-Man was going after <laughs> the whole time. Because it turns out that Inky just wants the Time Stone so that he can bring himself and all of his other dead friends back to life. That's all he's ever really wanted, and Pac-Man keeps stealing the Infinity Stones. Ah, oh, Pac-Man, you're so mean. Yep. I mean, to be fair, Pac-Man just eats anything round. I mean, yes. Insatiably. He's he's more animal than man. <laughs> <laughs> he's more Pac than man. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Team Darth Vader. All right, Team Mewtwo. Tell me, tell me who you're bringing to the party. I feel like rather than fighting Thanos directly, because, you know, he's, he's pretty powerful. When uh, when he arrives, Mewtwo is going to invoke the old Space Jam rules and tell him that in order to conquer it, he has to defeat him. But he's not going to do basketball or, you know, Mortal Kombat or whatever. It's going to be a Pokemon battle. So they <gasps> each have yeah. to pick uh, a bunch of proxies to fight through. So he's going to recruit, uh, he's going to recruit some people to his team. Kit, why don't you tell us about uh, which Pokemon Mewtwo is going to bring to bear against Thanos? Okay, so uh, I'm very familiar with the with my with my two picks. Kit, Kit is face palming for those of you listening. Slender Man, of deal God. with it. <laughs> He's his types are dark and spoopy. <laughs> <laughs> There's new types, and then Godzilla, deal with it. Kit, two from the top. Yep. His types are water and radiation, <laughs> or maybe it's water and cancer. I don't know. 
All right. So the other the other one that I think is a mere secret weapon here is uh, we're bringing in one of the most hated villains in all fiction, which is the Jesus from The Big Lebowski. Mm. His his types are of course poison and testosterone. Ah. <laughs> when Thanos comes up to him, he's like, "Hey, let me tell you something, Pendejo. You pull any of that crazy <laughs> shit with us, you flash that gauntlet on us. I'll take it away from you, and I'll stick it up your ass, and I'll snap my fingers together until they go click." <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, d- very different tactic of Pokemon just verbally assaulting the traitor. <laughs> That's actually what the Pokemon are doing when they use Growl. <laughs> <laughs> and for our last one, we have a double agent. Because if there's anyone that Carmen San Diego is secretly loyal to, it's going to be the person who represented her and not you traitors. <laughs> she knows where my loyalties lie. <laughs> Oh, so you also took Carmen Sandiego? Of San course Diego. I yes. picked Carmen San Diego. And of course uh. she's a double agent. And of course, while the Jesus is distracting her, she's going to steal off the Infinity Gauntlet. And she's not going to bring it back to freaking Darth Vader. No, she's bringing it to Mewtwo. She's bringing it to her kitty. Claire, let's be real. Uh-huh. She's clearly a triple agent and is only working for herself. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. We we both got played by Carmen you know, San Diego. I'm very willing to accept that. <laughs> but, but in the meanwhile. But in the meantime, she is going to give us one stone for our troubles. And... Uh, the, one, the stone she's going to give us is, of course, the most powerful stone of all. The only one that can stop this astro kerfuffle, the space stone. <gasps> mm. Space. If only Liz was here for this. I know. Using that, Mewtwo can undo all of like the crazy wormholes and dimensional nonsense that's been caused by the astro kerfuffle and can remake the universe as he sees fit. So all the better to rule it by. Wait, are you saying that Mewtwo? Claire, are you saying that Mewtwo is going to end Smash Fiction? <laughs> I'm saying Mewtwo might end the Astro Kerfuffle, but I don't know. Is we'll Mewtwo going to be the biggest, like, villain in League? <laughs> we finally created a villain that not even we can stop. Until Carmen San Diego robs him blind. <laughs> At the very least, him and Godzilla and Slenderman and the Jesus are going to be using the Space Stone to bounce around to different realities and take, you know, pictures in front of famous monuments and things, I guess. Yay! Moments before Carmen San Diego steals them <laughs> just godzilla doing one of those like eating challenges but it's a nuclear facility yes. it's like how fast can he eat this <laughs> oh he gets is the facility free if he finishes it in half an hour yes <laughs> i think it's free either way <laughs> you know what this is beautiful and i enjoyed all of this and um russo brothers i'm assuming this is going to be part two so <laughs> you know we are expecting some royalty checks uh, I am going to go to Judge's Chambers, which is AKA the hallway. Slender Man wants to see every forest in the universe mm-hmm. and haunt it. I could see that. <laughs> I think this is actually how Where in Time is Carmen San Diego got started. Oh, man. Where she got a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet. <gasps> oh, shit. I do like the idea that Slender Man and Carmen San Diego have reunited in this. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what did you guys think of the uh, the first Pokemon movie? Uh, it was some hot, sweaty garbage. Oh, I, the song <laughs> I, I, here's my review. Surprisingly watchable at 1.5 times speed. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it thoroughly. It it, it moved along because it's like an hour and 15 minutes long. And then if you watch it at 1.5 times speed, that's like, it's, it was an easy watch, man. It was lovely. I love, like Mew is my favorite Pokemon. And so Dan got to see me crying from just the cuteness overload. No joke. <laughs> She was crying. <laughs> when, when he's on the windmill and he's just plopping on each of the little wings and going, <laughs> meow, meow. <laughs> just like that. I will, I will point out, Kit brought that up as her favorite scene before we started watching the movie and she started crying then. <laughs> I do plan on playing Mew and Leak someday. Oh, yeah. I, I thought Mewtwo was a pretty cool character, too. I'd forgotten. Like, I thought it, he was, like, decently well-written. I thought he, he had, like, some echoes of, like, the, the Frankenstein's monster stuff going on. I thought he, he's a really mm-hmm. cool dude. I like, I like Mewtwo. Yeah. No, I do like yeah. Mewtwo quite a bit. Uh, he turns into a good mama bear for his clones. Yeah. I did find that moral of oh Pokemon are not meant to fight. Yes. To be a little hypocritical. very baffling. <laughs> I really wish I could have seen that movie in the original Japanese because I'm like, that can't be. That can't be how they wrote it. Like, did, they, did those writers ever play did, Pokemon? Or, or, or watch the show it's about? or anything or, yeah. I was like, that must have been a really bad, like, localization of just like, we got to make it a really strong no fighting moral for the American it's like, audience. This is the wrong way to do it, Mewtwo. First, you have to kidnap them and then you force them to fight each other so that you can keep kidnapping subsequent Pokemon. And you don't just punch each other. You shoot each other with attacks that have names like flamethrower that's how you do it not by slapping each other 
So are we doing uh, are we doing Meowth chat or oh. Meowthcast? Okay, so Meowthcast is gonna be we analyze every single episode that Meowth is in. Right, it's, it's a little bit of a Star Wars minute. I think th- I think that's all of them. Or do you only analyze the scenes where Meowth is in them? <laughs> the, the Meowth scenes. Well, we we analyze Pokemon episodes, but through the lens of Meowth. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> so we we have to like Meowth as the main character. Right, exactly. And how he's dealing with this bullshit. That yeah, and like. how the world is set up to discriminate against him and his kind, which is just him. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I guess him and Mewtwo are the the ones that talk. Yeah, that's true. Well, technically Mewtwo isn't, like, talking. He's just doing... He's uh, he's doing what I think... Yeah, what, like, every Pokemon is doing to each other, but in in the mind. So what you're saying is Mewtwo is less intelligent than Meowth. Your words, madam. Hey, are you are you claiming that just being able to to like force your vocal cords to speak uh, the the native tongue? I'm saying he doesn't have the focus and the willpower that Meowth has. He does the hero that we all need. He didn't have the desire for Meowth booty that Meowth did. <laughs> yeah, you just just be lucky this wasn't Darth Vader versus Meowth. This match would have been over a lot earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't Meowth know sound attack? Oh, that's great. That's really great. Okay. I've returned from deliberations with a ruling, and that ruling is Mewtwo. Yeah! Oh, oh my god! Okay, so I was picturing this cinematically, and I do not think... This is a big centerpiece battle. Obviously, not only the Astro Kerfuffle, but if this were to be in film, this would be the big centerpiece fight. And because it wouldn't be over quickly, then it's going to come down to a lot of the abilities to deflect, and then also... The ability, I think, to kind of withstand that kind of prolonged attack. And Mewtwo has more ability to handle that with the uh, Kit and Claire both mentioned the disable ability and then also the recover move. The ability to handle that made me feel that Mewtwo was going to be able to handle a prolonged bout of combat with greater ease against somebody as powerful as Vader than Vader was going to be able to handle prolonged combat against somebody as powerful as Mewtwo. Well, I can't be too mad at you because clearly you guys use the Jedi mind trick over Skype in order to convince Bob. <laughs> I mean... So, you know, fair play. Are you calling Bob weak minded, Dan? Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, I'm gentle minded. Is that a thing? <laughs> Good game, though, you guys. Yeah. Uh, to you, too. Jesus. Jedi mind tricks aside. Kit was so scared during the whole time. I kept on like, I was like <sighs> offering argument. She's like, no, Darth Vader is too scary. We can't do it. And I was like trying. I was <laughs> I having... my words, <laughs> ma'am. What the f- Fuck. Well, Neil, thank you for joining us. As always, your expertise and your wit and your sassiness are very welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. It's been great being on the show again. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Neil, you're great. Why? Why did we have to meet like this? <laughs> we were we were once friends. <laughs> we fought Darth Icky together. <laughs> Darth Lip Biscuit. <laughs> Time for the kid thinks. Over to Twitter, thank you to the Politipop Podcast. Thank you to Neil Butler. Love you, Neil. Cosplay Fiend, Cool Down Now, Andrew Young, Rafael Medina, Robert Ramsey, Florian, and Sean Boyd. Over to Tumblr, thank you to Changing Shades, Jeep Rhyme, Sid Rabbit Blog, and Fat Blunt 69 that uh, actually reblogged our shipwrecked episode with the quote, I can't wait to understand the title at all. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and on Facebook, thank you to Adam Mayo. Thank you guys for sharing all of our episodes. And we also wanted to thank Joshua Sibley, yeah. the universe's greatest messenger, riding the stars on his space motorcycle. Yeah. Where did he get this space motorcycle, you may ask? Why? Patreon.com slash Smash Fiction Podcast, where you can go and get your own space motorcycle yeah. or... Whatever we decide to give you based on the context of the episode you happen to appear in. Oh, I bet Joshua also has like Squirtle Squad glasses. He's so cool. So oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> he has like multiple pairs. <laughs> Not- he just takes a pair off and there's another pair underneath. It's pretty much that. <laughs> and I also wanted to bring to the attention of everyone our newest iTunes review. Yay! Which comes to us from Banjo Smythe. The review is titled Il Duce Ooh. and... Banjo gives us five stars and says, Have you ever wanted to hear Luna Lovegood and Stitch try to convince Dante Sparta to share his Lunchables? (laughs) Have you ever wanted to know who would win in a race between Han Solo and Malcolm Reynolds? Have you ever wanted every character ever portrayed by Nicolas Cage to have a battle royale in a WWF cage match? All this and more awaits you. Welcome to Smash Fiction, fellow nerd. Smiley face. Which I feel like... 
that's a pretty good just like blurb that mm-hmm. we could use. Yeah, can, so we need to get thanks in touch. for that, Banjo. Our fans are so much better at Ugh, describing our show. Than it's we embarrassing. Are. <laughs> We're just like, I don't know, it's some shit. We do a lot of fan fiction, kind of. <laughs> if you're okay with us occasionally yelling at each other, yeah, we it's just, fun. We just scream fan fiction. That's what this show is. <laughs> yes. Banjo, you write such good copy. Also, wanted to thank everybody for all the nice things that you said about Shipwrecked, because it was very scary oh, yeah. to be oh, yeah. thank a you. voice and then not have a script. That was terrifying. Yeah. But you guys were really nice and lovely. Thank you. Yeah, as uh, all of you know, we record this ahead of time, so Shipwrecked is a relatively recent release, but uh, you, the response that we've gotten from you guys has been very kind and very generous, and uh, we're glad that you liked it. We will hopefully be doing more of that in the future. The beans, Dan. The beans! <laughs> I know. I, I, we still have feels about those beans. So many feels. Oh, one more thing. I also wanted to thank Andy Spurlock, who is the fan who, way back... <gasps> in the primordial soup days of Smash Fiction, suggested this very match to us. Yeah, he got it first. I feel like lots of people have suggested it since, but... Well, certainly after that uh, surprise party episode where you threw Mewtwo against Darth Vader. (laughs) But yes, this has been on the back burner for quite some time. So thank you to Andy and to everyone who suggested this match for us. Back whenever Smash Fiction was but a single-celled organism. Hmm. Look at it now! Five cells. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Smash Fiction. We hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we bring you the third installment of our fiction Tupperware party, Collaboratory. Smash Fiction is produced by Dan Mulcairin, with logo design by Claire Mulcairin. Special thanks to Kevin McLeod of the Clan McLeod at Incompetech.com for our theme song, Hitman. You can find us on Twitter at Smash Fic Podcast and search for the Smash Fiction Podcast on Facebook, Tumblr, and YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice, and if you leave us a good review, we shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Smash Fiction is made possible thanks to our supporters on Patreon at patreon.com slash smashfictionpodcast. Please consider donating as little as a dollar each month. It helps us keep the show going, and we have great rewards and extra content for those who help us out. If you have any suggestions, feedback, or other contributions, send them to us at smashfictionpodcast at gmail.com and help us continue the fight. I mean, Mew's pretty great. I, w- I we watched the movie together, and I was like, I kept looking at Neil with wonder in my eyes. It's a tiny cat thing. I know, Bob. I know. <laughs> and its so arms cute. are so tiny. It's like a I little T Rex. It has to arms. like bend over to giggle. Yeah. Oh! Oh, that's, so if, if we do a match with Mew, that's going to be the first opener ever that was delivered through sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I, we got real close with, with Yuri on ice. <laughs> There's not really going to be arguments. Just open mouth weep for five minutes. I know. Going, I'm so sorry. I can't talk. I have snot dripping into my mouth. I'm so full of feels. <laughs> Mew versus Goose. <laughs> Who's cuter? <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> if I can suggest a pretty deep cut, Mew versus Nell 2 from Bleach. Oh, I have to look that person up. I do not remember that yeah, person. Yeah, I'd never watched Bleach. If it's Mew, then shouldn't it just be Nell? Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's true. Oh, Nell is very cute. Oh, she got some She got some titties. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's Bleach. Yeah, sm- smaller Nell is very cute. Uh, yeah. Other Nell gives me feelings I don't want to associate with cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bleach's brand. <laughs> yes. Tig old cute bitties. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I looked up a picture and, and I came, I very quickly came across some fan art where she is a centaur. Oh, 